Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Zero Escape, the known games, and this is Virtue's Ass Award. Yep, that's a good enough intro. So, this time, as I'll show you on the flow chart right now, this is the timeline where we went with Rudy Cyan Door with Alice, and now we're going to ally with her and see how that goes. Result. Yeah, we get it. As I and I stepped out of the A-B room, I could see the others running toward the per projection, shoving and pushing to get closer. What the hell were you thinking? Did you hear anything I said? I'm not getting picked up on my mic, I just need to turn it down a bit. <laughs> yeah, I was and I did. Then? Well, I want to believe in Alice. It's not really a rational decision. I know. Yo! What's up? Siggy! Fido! <laughs> That's hey, my favorite. What are you kidding? <laughs> We're about to announce the results. Let's go. We'll That's find my out if. Lines in the game. Alright. Oh, okay. Hey then. Here are the. Now! <laughs> Hey, Alice, what the hell is Excuse this? Excuse me? I just made the most rational choice. The best way to minimize risk and maximize reward in this situation is to choose betray. Anyone who thinks otherwise is, well, an idiot. Why? Why'd you do it? I could ask you the same question. Why did you do something as stupid as choose ally? Why? Haven't you heard of the prisoner's dilemma? The best solution is for all of us to choose ally. Oh, really? All of us, huh? Kay and Clover chose Betray too, you know. Yes. I know about the prisoner's dilemma. But everyone picking ally isn't a reasonable outcome. Just look at the results for this round. What do they tell you? You're a pretty tender-hearted guy to trust somebody you just met. Well, maybe tender-headed would be a little more appropriate in this case. What? Oh, was that upsetting? My apologies. I'm only trying to warn you. Alice is right. You made a stupid choice. And thanks to you, our BP is down to one now. God damn it. I set, I set, my, I set my jaw and stomped away from Alice's eye. My hands balled themselves into fists and my throat was tight and my eyes stung. Why? Why had she done it? Quark, Theo, and Luna's group, on the other hand, seemed calm, almost happy. Thank you. I'm so happy you chose Ally. Uh, no problem. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Dio wanted to pick Betray. What? Uh, hey! Mr. Dio told me to pick Betray so that we could get three points. He said we could escape together. If we betrayed you, then we'd have six BP. Sorry, that was my and fault. then if we betrayed someone in the next round, we'd have nine. Oh. Theo. Is this true? No, th that's not what happened at all. Kidding! I lied. That was a joke. That was me drinking water, because you know. Mr. Dio would never. It was a joke? Uh, yeah. Man, you, you really had me going there. <laughs> I really surprised you, huh? So you really were planning to choose Ally all along? Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't worry about it. We only did what anybody else would do. Right, Mr. Dio? Uh, yeah, exactly. I understand. I guess I just haven't had enough time to earn your trust, huh? Um, I suppose you could say that. I just didn't really expect you to be so nice about it. Looks like there had been some sort of argument between Kay, Clover, and Tamayoji. Although, whatever it was seemed to solve itself amicably. Okay, we got the point of this part. So, I tried to record this last night, got about halfway through it, my computer said I can't record anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> I deleted some stuff, and we'll see how far we get this time. Yeah, don't worry, I know what's uh, new and what's old. So I'll fly for all that stuff. 
head to the lounge. Right. Oh, hey Sigma. Can I get you a seat? Are right, you some kind of waitress? What do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? I just came here to check up on you guys. So... This is the lounge, huh? A bar. A sofa. And three ladies. I feel like I'm in the VIP room. Can I get you a drink? You better not be on the rage. I turned 21 just the other day. Haha, <laughs> suck at Clover and Arlen the drinking age is 18. Ha! Ah, I can already drink. Well, I guess we could probably have a drink or two then. Unfortunately, as much fun as that sounds, I don't think it's a very Why good not? idea. Why not? Is this really a good time to be getting wasted? Really? It seems like this sort of thing is exactly what makes people want to drink in the first place. You've got a point. Sigma? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Clover, prepare a margarita. Besides, I've got a headache. Drinking is probably not the best plan. Clover can do it right now. It hasn't gone away yet? Well, it was fine for a while, but I guess I had a bastard. Back. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm sure if I leave it alone, it'll go away in a bit. That's how it went away before. Has this been happening to anyone else? What? The headaches? Uh-huh. Now that you mention it, yeah, I did get one a bit ago. I feel fine now, though. What about you, Luna? Um, you know, I think I did have a bit of a headache earlier. Not me. No headaches here. Well... Well what? It's hard to explain. I just feel kind of... weird. Your head feels weird? No. My body feels weird. Like my whole body. Do you feel like kind of numb? I think I've got the same thing. It's kind of like... Hmm, when you fall asleep on top of your arms. I hate that. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> it's god awful. But when you wake up, your arm feels kind of like it's not really yours anymore. Not just my arm though, my whole body feels kind of numb and foreign. Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's kind of like that, but... Oh, if that's what you're talking about, then yeah, I know what you mean. Really? It's kind of like my body isn't really mine. I'm sort of... floating. Like that? Yeah, exactly. Maybe it's because of the anesthetic gas. The what now? It might have looked like white smoke. The stuff they used when they abducted you. Oh, yeah. Right. It seems like we were unconscious for a long time, so... It must have been pretty powerful stuff. You think that might be some kind of side effect? Well, it could be a side effect. Or it could be that it just hasn't worn off completely yet. Hmm. Whatever. That's not important. Right now we need to figure out how to get out of here. Alright, I'll go have a look somewhere else then. You guys gonna stick around here? Yeah. Haven't really taken a good look at everything yet. Okay. Catch you later then. I waved goodbye and then left. That's pretty much what he said. Infirmary, let's go. Huh? Oh, Sigma. Alice. What's up with your face? You look like you just saw a roach. Are you still angry? Of course. I'm teetering on the brink of abyss if I see you. I didn't have a choice. I'm just trying to get out of here like we all are. And that's enough to justify screwing someone else over? It's not what I meant and you know it. If I'd known for sure that you were going to choose Ally, then I would have chosen Ally too. <laughs> Easy for you to say that now. What? Am I such a horrible person for wanting to get out of here? I have to get out of here. There's so many things I still want to do. Like what? Well, let's see. I want to wear lots of gorgeous clothes. I want to eat tons of delicious food and fall in love. What an idiot. Excuse me? 
And I was going to take your side, but after that load of horse shit, you're on your own. Ugh. Look. Let me try this again. I'm... frustrated. But there really is something important I have to do. Which is... Avenge my father's murder. That's what I have to do. What happened to him? Could you elaborate? No, I couldn't. This isn't the kind of thing I should be telling people I don't even know. Just tell me one thing. Does your father's murder have anything to do with us being trapped here? I have here? no idea. As to why you're here, your guess is as good as mine. But it's possible that his death is connected to my abduction. Meaning... I was on their trail. I was tracking down the people who killed him. How close were you? I can't say, but it's possible that I was getting close enough that... Are you a detective? Well, I wouldn't really say I'm a detective. Not a bad guess, though. Why are you guys looking at me like that? Well, I mean, you don't really have the detective look. I didn't say I was a detective. Then what are you? CIA? No. Fine. Well, whatever you are, don't you don't look like one. That's fine. In my line of work, the less I look like what I am, the better. Better I keep him guessing. Hey. What's she got to do with anything? Sorry, I skipped that line. Well, you know each other, right? I was thinking maybe you were related or worked together or something. No, she has nothing to do with my work. She's just a friend that I met somewhere. Where is somewhere? In the middle of a desert. <laughs> uh, it's just like everyone here probably thinks, like, okay, she's on something, we're out. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's the truth. A desert? Yes, but that's an awfully long story. Wait, hold on. Why am I the only person getting the third degree? That doesn't seem fair to me. How about you guys give up a little personal information, too? We'll start with you, Tenmyoji. Who are you? Just a garbage collector. Any ties to Zero? None. What's your relationship with Quark? You two know each other, right? Do I have to answer that? Well, if you really don't want to... It's oh. But I apologize, but I don't have anything to say about that subject. I mean, it's not like you told us everything, either. I see. Very well, then. Dio, it's your turn. What's your profession? Well, you're probably gonna think I'm full of shit, but I'm a circus ringleader. A ringleader? <laughs> you're kidding! Nope. I'm the real deal. I lead a company of about 50 people. We travel all over the world. It was my grandfather's grandfather who founded it. My father died at a young age. I'm a fifth-generation ringleader. My old man was a trapeze artist. He tried to do this quadruple flip and missed. Well, I guess he wasn't really young. He was about 40. He was pretty reckless for a guy that age. Month. Always talking about how he couldn't let the kids show him up. Guess I see. You lost your father too, then. Yeah. Shit. Guess I got a little sappy there. Anyway, point is, I don't have any damn idea how I'm connected to Zero. I got grabbed on the last night of one of our tour stops. I'd gone out to a couple bars and gotten shit-faced. On my way back to the caravan, this black van pulls up. Somebody grabs me and throws me inside. Before I can even get a look at him, they hit me with that gas and I'm out like a light. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in the AB room. Anyway, enough about me. We still haven't Sorry, heard your I'm story, Sigma. Stuff like that. It's me just drinking water because I have to with the, the voice acting I'm doing in this. Who game. are you? I told you guys the first time we met. Don't you remember? I was on my way home from school when I got in this, when I got in my car. This white guy started pouring out of everywhere. Are you some kind of doctor? Uh, no, I'm still working on my degree. I'm shooting for a PhD, but I'm not quite there yet. I guess you've been working on that for quite a while, huh? Yeah, I guess I have. 
Can you think of anything that might connect you to any of this? Believe me, I've thought about it, but I just keep drawing a blank. What about Zero? No idea. Do any of the people here look familiar to you? Nope. You're all strangers. Well, I guess I can't say for sure about Kay. I haven't seen his face. I suppose it's possible he's someone I know. Just who is he, anyway? Until that amnesia clears up, I don't think we've got any way of knowing. Oh, come on. You know he's full of shit. You still don't believe him? Of course not. Okay, well, K is a bit of a mystery, but what about some of the others? Clover, for instance. What does she do? I think do? she's a student. At night, she's a waitress or a bartender or something. What about Quark? Well, he probably doesn't have a job, huh? He's still in elementary school, right? <laughs> Why is that funny? It's nothing. Just forget about it. He's secretly 32. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Boy his age would be in elementary school. You really don't know much, do you? Mm, he said would be, so that means he's not. About Quark, I mean. And if it makes you feel better, sure. Well... I know a little about Luna. I got her talking when we were in the infirmary. She says she's got some sort of medical license or something. She's a nurse? It could mean she's a doctor. I don't know. She didn't say. Just going by how she looks, though, I'd guess nurse. That leaves us with Phi. She's the most mysterious to me. What does a girl like that do? You've been around her the most, Sigma. She told you anything? Look, I just don't know, alright? It's just kind of... there. Like, I looked at you, and some part of my brain just said, That's Sigma. No, nothing in you sure? particular. Yeah, she's a real mystery, alright? I honestly know about as much as you do. So basically nothing. I hadn't really realized it until I said it. I spent hours with Fi, yet I knew nothing about her except her name. And I only had her word that that was even the truth. Who was she really? The more I thought about it, the more suspicious she, she seemed. A fake detective, a waitress, a garbage collector, an elementary school kid, a nurse, and a circus ringleader. Plus two total mysteries. What do we all have in common? I don't think Zero would just grab a bunch of people randomly. There's no point to talking about this. We should just focus on getting out of here. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna go check on the other Where do you plan on going? I think I'll head over to the crew I quarters. I see. Right. Later, bro. Oh, Sigma, perfect timing. You were in the crew quarters before, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Fi and Alice went. Fi, Alice, and I went through all the rooms. Did you find anything suspicious? Like a secret door or something? If I had, you really think I wouldn't have told you? Anything else out of the ordinary, perhaps? Out of the ordinary. What's this book? Oh, that's a book of me out. A me out? Oh. Sorry, it's a thing that's happened to me ever since I was a kid. Whenever I start talking about cats, I start talking like one. It doesn't really mean anything, though. Okay. Don't judge me like that, Kay. <laughs> that's weird. Screw you, Quark. So what's the cat book about? Oh, uh, well, there's this quantum physics ball experiment called Schrodinger's Cat. I have to say, like, the Google Translate voice did. This book's me out. Oh, yes, I've heard about that. A cat is put in a box with a device that has a random chance to release a poison which will kill the cat. What the fuck? <laughs> that means the cat is both alive and dead until someone opens the box. Something like that, right? Meowby? What? I don't really know anything of Meowthus. Just telling you what I So it probably isn't gonna give us any hints then. No, 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 Quark. It, it's probably you have to roll the 
cards. Say it with me, okay? Probably. Probably. There you go, Quark. That's how you talk like a cat now. Quark, you're doing it too. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> What about you guys? What do you mean? You checked out the lounge with Clover, Tamiyoji, and Quark was... And... And Quark was in the infirmary with Dio and Luna. It took me a second to get my head around that sentence. Anything, anything suspicious there? Well, this whole facility is pretty suspicious, but... I suppose that's not what you meant. Well, the puzzles in the lounge were... Lunar Eclipse themed. Yes. Apparently, there's supposed to be a lunar eclipse on December 31st, 2028. All the puzzles were related to that somehow. Isn't that this New Year's Eve? I suppose it is. Well, I can't say I know what year, or even what day it is, but Clover was saying something to that effect. knocked out on the 25th, so the 31st will be six days after that. Lunar Eclipse. Lunar Eclipse. What did it have to do with any of this? Try as I might, I couldn't think of a way an Eclipse we connected to our production. What about the infirmary, Quark? Did you find anything there? Yeah! We did find something. Just one thing, though. What was it? Do you and Luna didn't tell you? No. Okay. I got it right here. Just a second. Yeah, Radical 6 stuff, we get it. Was that true, though? Was that really the first time I'd heard it? I couldn't shake the feeling that I've heard Radical 6 somewhere before. But where? And why? If it is true, then I worry about what might be happening to the world outside. Is there a pandemic raging on the other side of these walls? Clover's voice shattered the silence. You guys! Hurry! You need to come with me! Has something happened? Yes! I mean, sort of. I mean, we found something! What did you find? It's horrible! It's really scary! Horrible? Oh, never mind! Just shut up and follow me! You'll understand when you see it. <laughs> It's it? right over here in the next room. Just follow me. Clover was the first into the room, followed quickly by Kay and Quark. She said nothing, just pointed under the bed. The three of us crouched down and followed her finger. There it was. <laughs> what the hell is this? I, I think it's a... a bomb. A bomb? No way. I'm having a memory of a memory I haven't even had yet. So, thank you, Sigma. Goodbye. Of course, it was the same bomb I saw in my vision. And... Had it been a hallucination? That's so Sigma, it's the future he can see. That's so Sigma. <laughs> I couldn't help myself, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> Had it been a been a premonition. Premonition. We need to tell everybody! No, it's alright. Luna's out rounding them up. They should be here in just a few seconds. <laughs> See? Where is it? Where's this bomb? No sooner had she spoken the words than the rest of our fellow captives arrived. Luna pushed through them and pointed at the bomb. There! You see? Okay, I just thought of something. I think we're like the cat in that book. Like, everyone in this game is just like the cats in that book. 
We're both dead and alive right now. For several long moments, we just stared into silence. Slowly, we began to eye one another. Old suspicion suddenly reawakened. It was Fi who finally broke the silence. Doesn't look like it has a timed detonator. There must be a remote somewhere. You're right. It'll probably use an active button or a switch of some sort, not a dead man switch. If we can get it, we should be safe as long as we don't press the button. Hmm. No, 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 no. Do not push that button. Uh, I'm killing it with references today. Who's the first person to find this? Me! And, and Luna. We found it while we were searching this room. I thought you and Luna were in the lounge. Well, yeah. We looked all over, but we couldn't find anything there. So we gave up on the lounge and came here. I can confirm that. I wanted to look around the lounge some more, so I stayed back. You guys must have found it when you got here, then? Yes. How did you know it was a bomb? Well, I mean, I could tell just by looking at it. Why? Well, during my train... Clover! Clover's eyes wider than she tap her hands over her mouth. Anyway, this is definitely a bomb. I guarantee it. How do you know? I just do, okay? You sounded pretty sure about the switch, too. How do you know all this? Let's just say it's an occupational hazard. What kind of occupation do you have? I can't tell you that. Spare me the bullshit. This isn't time for keeping secrets. Please, just trust me. Look, I know I'm repeating myself. But I'm sure that's a bomb. And it's not just any kind of bomb. It's an antimatter bomb. Antimatter? <laughs> what? Wait, you mean a bomb that uses annihilation energy? Oh, you know what that is? Anyway, yes, you're right. Uh, what's Annihil Nation? <laughs> I would have thought you'd know. Huh? Why? Well, your name is Quark. You do know what that means, right? Yeah, Grandpa told me about it. He said it's an elementary particle, one of the smallest bits of matter, but I don't really know anything else. I see. Can you explain it to him, Tenmyoji? Me? Well, you know him best. I thought you could explain it best. Uh, let me think. I don't know. It's hard to think of a way to explain it in simple terms. You want me to do it? Yes, please. Fine, not, and then turn to Quark. Okay. To begin with, we usually refer to bits of matter as particles, but there are also these things called antiparticles. For example, an electron is a particle with a negative charge. It has a sort of opposite, which is the antiparticle called the positron. It has a positive charge instead of a negative one, like the electron. So, protons have antiprotons, and neutrons have antineutrons. Antimatter is a general term that covers all the antiparticles. The thing that's interesting about antimatter is that because it's the opposite of normal matter, when they collide, they both sort of cancel each other out. When they cancel each other out, though, it releases a whole bunch of energy. That process is called annihilation. So, an antimatter bomb is a bomb that uses annihilation energy. Um, sorry. I don't really get it. Oh. All right, how about this? You've got men and women, right? They're kind of like complete opposites. What happens when you put them together? Um, well, if there Babies. were uh, quantum men and women, then when you put them together, they disappear. This lady is just meant to YMK. Because their opposite elements cancel each other out. Like when a plus cancels out a minus, you get zero. That's annihilation. But when you get annihilation, you also get... I know! <laughs> Thank you, Quark. You said what we were all thinking. Thank exactly. In this case, the baby you get is the energy from the annihilation. It's not a real baby, of course, but like a baby, it's got all sorts of potential to do amazing things. That's kind of a strange explanation. You followed it, though, right? Yeah! Yeah, but that thing under the bed isn't going to be making a baby. Mm -hmm. Just how big of a... Just how big of an explosion are we going to get here? It's pretty simple, actually. Just use Einstein's E equals MC squared. The mass lost during annihilation will be converted to energy, so... So you would take the total mass of matter and antimatter and multiply it by the speed of light squared. 
that should get you the amount of energy. For example, let's say that it has 350 milligrams of antimatter. That would mean there would also be 350 milligrams of matter, right? So you'd have 700 milligrams total. Yes. That means annihilation would produce roughly 63 trillion joules. Um, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of joules. <laughs> 63 trillion? That's about as much energy as the Hiroshima bomb. Oh, God. What the? You've got to be kidding me. But there's only 350 milligrams of stuff in there. Well, technically, it's 700 milligrams since you have the matter and the antimatter. That's not the point. We're talking about something that weighs less than a gram being equal to a bomb that weighed like 10,000 pounds. Don't get so excited. I think I know what kind of bomb this is. It's probably using antihydrogen. There should only be about 25 micrograms of material in there. That's less than a thousandth of a gram. So you'd only get about 45 billion joules of energy, right? What does that mean? About as much explosive power as one ton of TNT. A ton? Yes. Well, approximately. And how exactly should I not worry about that? That's enough to blow up a 10-story building! True. But it's a lot less powerful than an atomic bomb. We don't know how big this place is. If we can get far enough away from the bomb, we might have a chance of survival. Perhaps. But how do we know this is the only bomb? What do you mean? Look at it carefully. It's got a number three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. If the bombs are numbered... Then there could be a number two bomb or a number one bomb out yes. there. Yes. There's no way to know if this is the final bomb either. There could be a fourth or a fifth. Anyway, we can't just sit here and do nothing. We should move it. Somewhere. You have to afford to reach for the bomb. No! Don't touch it! I let's grab Theo by the wrist and jerk him away from the bed. What the hell do you think you're doing? Have you got a death wish or something? This bomb is here because somebody planted it. Do you really think they didn't rig it to go off if some idiot tried to move it? Well, then what the fuck are we supposed to do? We'll just have to leave it be for now until we can find the detonator or figure out how to turn it off. And you're telling us we should just prance off and ignore the incredibly deadly bomb that is probably going to kill us all? There's not much else we can do. Do you know how to turn it off? Well... There is a way. Then spill the beans, lady. How do we turn the damn thing off? There should be an emergency deactivation password. If you enter that password, the device should, well, deactivate. So we just need to get the password? Yes, that's right. But there's no keyboard or anything on the bomb. Look again. You see it? Right here. There's a port. If we can find the password input device, we just connect it here. Then we can enter the password. Do something like this. I have no idea. But we can figure out when they did it. When you and oh, I searched oh, this yeah. room, we didn't find anything, right? So that means the bomb must have been planted after we'd uh, left. After we left, huh? But when we went and checked the chromatic doors, we... Sorry, we were all there. And after that, we'd all been around other people. There's no way anyone could snuck off the planet. I don't know about that. After we finished the AB game, we all split up. But if someone planted it right before then... What do you mean? Oh, yeah. You don't know, do you? Before we went off to the three rooms, we searched the hallway. Everybody was all split up. Huh. Yeah. Anyone could have come by here then. It would have been easy to sneak away. You know, I don't remember seeing you around, Sigma. What were you doing? <laughs> well, I was, uh, I was kind of deep in thought, I guess. I stayed behind in the warehouse when you guys went off. Yeah, I can tell this is coming. Hey, why are you guys giving me that look? You don't think I planted it, do you? I never said that. Not out loud, you didn't. You've got to be kidding me. I don't know anything about this bomb. Really? Are you sure? Back when we were in the A-B room, you said you saw the moment when the bomb exploded. That was um, just a... I could hardly say premonition. If they... If I, sorry, if they didn't think it was the worst lie on the planet, they'd think I was insane.
Wait, 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 wait. This doesn't make any sense. According to Tamayoji, any of any of us could have been could have been in here. Why am I the only one who was under suspicion? Also, also, there's no way to know the culprit is actually one of us. Maybe there's someone in here and they set up the Impossible. Why? There's no way that would get past Zero. And there's no way Zero would let anybody do something that would get in the way of the game going forward. Um... What? When you say Zero, you mean the AI, right? Of course. This is confusing. From now on, let's refer to the real Zero, the one behind all of this, as Zero Senior. Which would, of course, make the AI Zero Junior. Okay, fine with me. Anyway... Whichever one it is, they're not going to let a 10th person in. There's no way. But what if the 10th person is Zero Senior? I don't think it could be. Why not? Well, Zero Junior said so. He said that the real Zero was one of us. Fi and Clover were right. There couldn't be a 10th guest, and Zero Senior was without a doubt one of us. But if that was the case, then could Zero Senior have planted the bomb? If not, then who had? Alice? Dio, Luna, K, Clover, Tamiyoji, Phi, or it seemed insane, but it could have but could it have been Quark. No, why would Zero Senior have gone through all the trouble of setting a bomb to make this game more exciting, to make it seem more dangerous? No, it didn't fit at all. But if that was the case, then the person who planted the bomb was someone other than Zero Senior. Oh no, this is bad. <laughs> Press what the buttons it? on your bracelet! Oh, we better hurry. Ah, oh, shit. Is this for real? We've only got four minutes until the chromatic doors open! Let's go, then. You're right. This bomb thing is gonna have to wait until later. Alright. Yeah, we know all of this. Okay, so now I realize I've gone too far again, and I need to look at what door we went through. <sighs> I make mistakes with this game sometimes. It looks like they're all okay, locked, though. Okay, Luna, and... Ah, uh, Luna and Alice and me. Does Wait, that mean this is just a dead end? We're gonna get the Golem Bay again. Hmm. Oh, there's a weird lever thing over try here. Try pulling it. How about you try pulling it? Hey, what's with all this hostility? Are you still mad about the last AB game? Of course I am. Please don't fight. We need to work together, or we're really going to be in trouble. Please? Uh. Hmm, very well. I'll pull the lever then. Is that okay? Yeah, go right ahead. See if I care. One of the doors open. But um, I wonder how you open the other ones. Who cares? We should get moving. Oh god, please, I'm holding back a piss. The water a waterfall and river is the last thing I want to see right now. I just say it looks beautiful, I admit, but it's not what I want to see right now. What is this place? Don't tell me we somehow managed to get outside. I doubt it. Look up. There's a ceiling up there. Yeah, I remember the door that B Garden or something. What's B Garden? It probably stands for something. Maybe beautiful? Huh? This feels like a whole other little world. Really? Right up at the waterfall? Uh, like an oasis in the middle of this metal? I feel kind of weird saying this, considering where we are, but this place feels so liberating. Of this green. It's wonderful. It's huge, though. We'll wear ourselves ragged. <laughs> sorry, I can't. I need to go to the bathroom. This must be the exit. I'll be right back, guys. I'm sorry. Damn, so much for this being easy. Someone else can talk. It's locked. Great. We should split up and look around. Agreed. <laughs>
note to future self. Do not drink as much water when recording. <laughs> uh, I've learned my lesson. Oh, I really hope you guys did not hear that this. Because <laughs> my bathroom is right beside the door, so you probably heard it. God damn it. We're going to have to cross the, cross the water to get over there. Please be careful. If you slip, you could fall into the stream. There are three red buttons on the panel. I pushed them, but nothing happened. Do you think they're broken? Maybe you need to press them in a specific order. No, okay. Let's check if you could have a certain part. Huh? There's a something next to my foot. Bronze key. A large shovel. Nice. These are going to come handy. A steel colored shovel. It's not rusty at all. Maybe keeping it in the shed was... Maybe it in the shed kept it from rusting. <laughs> this has to be for digging stuff up. It can't be it can't think of any other use for it. A small copper key. Probably goes into a keyhole. I mean what else do you do with a key? <laughs> There's a, a sky but where doors. I think the ceiling dome is made up of a bunch of hexagonal screens. They're playing a video that looks like the sky. Then that means they won't even get any, get even rain or stormy or anything, huh? Probably not, although I imagine there's some kind of system in place to water the plants. Sounds pretty boring. A bird's eye view of the garden. Kinda looks like a map. What's that on the right? It looks like a box. I think it's a treasure chest. It's connected to the drawing above, see? Alright, let's figure this out. This is the treasure chest, right? And this is an island? There aren't any islands on here, in here, though. There's something green going on the top. Yeah, there's grass everywhere here. Maybe it's something else. Well, let's look for something with green on top. The copper treasure chest is near something that's covered in something green. Okay, I guess we have to do them in order then. Nope. Hello? Hey, it's a paprika. No, that's a pepper. Probably a bell pepper. Paprika is what you slice the spice you make from them. Oh, huh? I just put it in half. I'm not sure. Wait, there's something in there. Oh, yeah. Let me take a look. Might I think a color coin be made of metal? You can get lots of different colored coins by using different alloys. I saw a 5 cent coin made from brass once, and a 10 cent coin made from bronze. I've seen people using a metal detector to search for coins on those shows where they hunt for treasure. Yeah, I guess if coins are metal, that would make sense. Do you think there might be some coins in these tomatoes too? Maybe, but there's an awful lot of them. They all look the same. Only with some way to tell which tomato at a coin. We needed that metal detector then. Looks like someone's planted up some onions in here. Jeez, my nose. Sorry guys, I've got a cold. I think there might be a coin in one of them. Cucumber. Cucumber. These cucumbers are so long. Do you think there might be a coin in one of them? Maybe we should go through them one by one and fight into them. That's not a good idea. There's gonna be something we can use to make it easier. I see, you can have any ideas, Luna. Up oh, there it is. This is a metal detector. It's pretty much it's pretty much what it says on the tin. You use it to detect metal. What sort of range do you think it has? It depends on the amount of metal. Large objects can be detected even if it's several meters on the ground. That's amazing! But what about smaller things like a ring or a screw? Yeah, unfortunately sometimes you can't find that sort of thing even if it's only a few centimeters on the ground. Oh, so you need to be pretty close for the metal detector to work then. Alright, grab it. Uh, okay. Do we act any of the any of the others? No, just this one. Here you go. Metal detector reacts to the inside of this tomato, right? We can see it. There must be some metal in here then. We can see it. Oh no, that was that was the shovel behind it. Never mind. Oh, this one this one's reacting to the onion. 
Alright, dig it up. <laughs> this is the only one that got a reaction, right? Okay, I think we get it at this point. Did any of the others cause a reaction? No, just this one. Here you go. This cube hover is the one the metal detector reacted to, right? Then there must be something inside it. This metal detector went off when it waved the, when it waved this onion. When it waved over this onion, right? That must be there's metal in there. I'm gonna bring this metal. Yeah, we did. Okay, let's uh plant. This is just a flower pot. There's nothing special about it at all. Wait, don't people usually hide their house keys under a flower pot or in the mailbox? They do. Just trust me, I'm sure there's something under there. Alright then. Ah, uh, we're gonna need all three more keys then, aren't we? A large Japanese cell the claw of a tree. Nice. I also saw the safe over there. <laughs> Looks like there's some sort of mosaic at the bottom of the pot. It's a fucking sun. A lion. Yeah, looks like a lion, alright. Ah, uh, he's eating the sun. I see it. I see it now. I don't like seeing those lions eating the sun. A metal scale. There's a plate on each side. On the right plate. Small golden key. Probably goes in a keyhole. I mean, what else do you do with a key? And on the left plate. This looks like a paring. This looks like a, this looks like a paring knife. What's that? It's a knife used for small, delicate work. Like, like... Deveining and shrimp. You can usually cut it, cut it with pretty much. You can use and cut pretty much anything. That's awesome. You, you know all about cooking and stuff. I bet Alice just cuts it with her bare hands. I guess it's time I showed you how good I am at cooking things. I think I'll start by cooking you. Sorry. I think this is part of something. This part looks kind of like a butterfly. Yeah, I can see that. Like the wings. This looks... The other side is the sort of octagon shape. It looks like just, just enough room for two people on the bench. Why are you looking at me? No reason. They say sitting on a bench with your boyfriend is pretty romantic. Have you ever done that, Luna? Of course not. Stop making fun of me. You wanna sit down with me? You, um, well, um, let me think about it. <sighs> Sigma gets all the ladies. I know I'm gay, but I'm still kind of jealous. White flower green leaves. I think it's a skunk cabbage. The white flower part's actually a leaf. Alright, I don't think there's uh, anything else. Let's see if we can find Oh. Nice. There we go. That should do it. Oh, there's something on the bench that I missed earlier. I think there's something over here, but I can't really tell. Can you go over there? There we go, finally. Nice. I think you need to press the buttons in a specific order. Do you think the order's written down somewhere? Too bad there aren't any fish. There's a red spot of mushroom going under the shadow of the tree. Nope. A red spot of mushroom. I think I'll try digging here. That's where one of the chests was meant to be. That's where we use the silver key. Oh, is this? Uh, here we go. Maybe we can see this here. Yep. The handle, the handle fits pretty 
everything into the hole in the wall. Good, now try turning it. When I turned the handle, it got dark. It looked like the light there went down. Maybe that light was sort of a surgeon's sun. Surrogate sun. If that's the case, it didn't just get dark, it became nighttime. So the garden needs nighttime? I guess so. Or maybe there's some hidden meaning in switching from night to day. It went into the lion pool, didn't it? Oh. Hey, look at that. Are these stars? Maybe the idea was nightfall the stars come out. show up once night fell. I wonder if there's some significance to that. <laughs> that star is definitely red. The red light is underneath it. This, this is a big star. So far I found one star. <laughs> that star is pretty green. That's a pretty small star. I'm impressed we even saw it. So far I found two stars. I think we have to count all the stars then. <laughs> this star's yellow. The size, shape, and color are exactly what I expect from a star. I guess you could call this a typical star. I would say it's mid-sized. So far I found three stars. <laughs> this one's blue. I feel like I could just reach out and grab it. How romantic. Well, I am a woman. It looks a little large for me to carry though. So far I found four stars. I found five stars. Wow, it even made a waterfall. Hold on, it doesn't look like there's something. Doesn't it look like there's something built into the rock wall behind it? Yeah, the walkway goes under it, doesn't it? I wonder what's back there. It's too dark to tell what's going on. Impossible, but that would get really boring really fast. Uh, I'm not sure what else to do here. Oh, it looks like dessert's been piled up in a few places. There's green moss growing on top, too. I think this might be a higher. I wonder around here's higher than others. Because someone dug up a bunch of dirt and placed it here. Okay, we need to get the shovel. I swear, another chest is gonna be. Bronze lid, so we're gonna combine this with the bronze key. Yeah. Nice, now we just need to find the last one. Ah, it's over with the uh, skin cabbages. You're gonna take up the skin cabbage? Poor thing, I've never done anything to you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll replant it when we're done. There we go. This piece of paper has seven red. 
red dots on it, and an arrow running down the left edge. Maybe we're supposed to read it like a direction. Read it in the direction of the of an arrow. It looks like the dots are either in the middle or on middle on the left or on the right. Let alone Alice or Luna. Uh, yeah, from here, I don't know, so I think it's walkthrough time. should be able to do something with them. Oh! The stars relate to the coins. Can we put one? This is a balance scale. You can use it to weigh things. It'll help you figure out things that look similar have different weights. Like those four coins, for instance. Okay, well let's go over, well 
we'll have to walk for it so the snow wheel needs to show how each one's heavier. God, that surprised me. I was not expecting that to be a puzzle. Oh, it doesn't say which order I need to press these in. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is written on the piece of paper we have. Luna, let me press the button. Oh, I did it wrong. Now if I go back into it and try it. file you need to touch them in you need to touch them from largest to smallest red blue yellow purple green and then to get the true file password you need to touch them from order from entrance to the lion that is purple, blue, yellow, green, red. Awesome, solved it. Did it work? Look at the screen. Okay, so the real password is green, so do the blue one first. Spoon, sun, star, got it. Sun, star. Nice. Yes, it opened. You did it. Good job, Zygma. And the real password was... Sorry, 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 got it. Okay, maybe I'll put it in one. Um, oh, it's not here, it's on the bottom. Okay, now what did I do wrong? I put it in, what the hell? Oh, I put the moon in the wrong place. Whoops. Now we got it. Jeez, that was uh, something I should not have messed up. <laughs> Whoa, it opened again. Is there something inside? There's a lot of stuff inside. Let's have a look then. First off, map like usual. Yep, so there's 4B, there's 4A. Let's keep going. There are more things in the safe. This is the key card. It has a moon, it has a moon on it, that means it's an Amadex card, but it's round. Uh, so solo, weird pair. So, what have we got next? It looks like a piece of paper. What's this? Some kind of diagram. It doesn't make any sense. I wonder what it is. Oh well, just forget about it for now. We could... Oh, Nevada test sites. Wait a minute, I just noticed that. Oh, it's gonna be involved somehow. Forget about it for now. We 
can always come back to it later. There's two more things in here. What is this? Let's take a note. It says IG equals immune goblin. Goblin. What's immune goblin? It's another word for an antibody. You mean like the thing in your body that fights off bacteria and viruses and stuff? Yeah, I knew that I knew that's what global was, but I didn't I didn't know what immune global was. So what's this supposed to tell us? Honestly, I have no idea. The only thing left is this key. That must be the key to the exit. Yeah, I think you're right. We should be able to use it to open the door. Awesome. What are we waiting for? Alright. to learn about what Globin wants from through Mario and Luigi Bowser's inside story. Because it's true. No sooner we stepped out of the garden, I saw three people I'd watch leave through the green door sometime earlier. Whoa, what are you guys doing we here? We gotta be asking you the same thing. How'd you get here? Sigma, hand me the map. Map? Oh, right. I dug the map out of my pocket and spread it out in front of us. You three came in through the blue door, right? And which yeah. room did you go into? This fan-shaped one. It's called the Bee Garden. Bee Garden? It's the big dome with a bunch of pa with a bunch of plants on it. In it. Look, you can see for yourself later, all right? What about you guys? Well, after we went through the green door, we ended up in the treatment center. And then we met up. Yeah. Right here. So, what's the treatment center? It sounds a lot like the infirmary. You wanna have a look? We can go back to any of the rooms we've already visited. So? Sure, let's have a look. After a few moments of brisk walk, we found ourselves in the treatment center. Treatment center. What are those? They're why this is called a treatment center. Those pods can cure a number of illnesses, and even repair certain injuries. Oh, that's nuts. How about you climb in one of them, Dio? Why? Well, maybe it can fix whatever's wrong with your brain. Uh, hey! You wanna start something, lady? Calm down now, son. You don't cool off a bit and I'll have to throw you in one of these pods here. Huh? Why? Weren't you paying attention? They have a cold sleep function. I figured that ought to cool your head up. I need a soundboard. Did you just say cold sleep? That's where they freeze you, right? And you can stay that way for a really long time. Yeah. According to some records we found in here, until three people. Oops, sorry. You mean three of us were? We don't know. All we found was what was in the logs for the pods. How long were they here? No idea. Part of the logs were erased. All that's left is when the cold sleep function turned off. It records them thawing out, getting up. Then they could be anyone. Well, anyone but you. Well, why not Alice? Because you don't need a device like this to freeze Alice. Am I wrong? Huh? What are you talking about? You don't need to play dumb. The water in your body isn't normal water. It's something called Ice-9. Ah, so we are gonna bring it up. It freezes at 96.8 degrees. That means all you have to do to put yourself in cold sleep is drop your body temperature below 96.8. No fancy machine needed. Where on earth did you hear that? From Clover. Clover? Mm-hmm, yeah, cause she was there. When we were exploring the lounge during the first round. I see. <laughs> so funny. Oh man, you fell for that one hook, line, and sinker, didn't you? Clover was messing with you. That is, if she even said anything to you at all. It was a lie. A joke? No, there's no way it was a joke. Yeah. I'm sure about it. Your body is made of Ice-9. Well, you're mistaken. It's a ridiculous misunderstanding. An urban legend. 
with seemingly no prompting, Alice laughed into, sorry, launched into a lengthy explanation. It went something like this. Oh, they're even playing the music from the original game. Oh, here we go. At some point in the past, someone found a frozen, mummified Egyptian queen. What was curious about this mummy, however, was that it remained frozen at room temperature. People began to refer to her as all ice. Eventually, became... Eventually... Sorry. Eventually, became simply Alice. Rumors of her body was made ice... Made, was made of ice nine began to circulate, and her... And her bizarre refusal to fall only compound, compounded them. They say that the mummy finally thawed, and when it did, it began to move. Sorry, guys, wind. It's crazy, am I right? And ever since then, I've had people say they thought I was her. I mean, really. How could anyone believe something so ridiculous? Have you looked at yourself in the mirror? The existence of this mysterious Alice and of this ice that doesn't melt are just urban legends. But why would people make the mistake about you in particular? It can't just be because your name's Alice. There are tons of Alices. Is it because of your face and how you look? Well, it is true that I am both beautiful and elegant. Can I really be blamed if people think I'm an Egyptian queen? I don't think that's the only reason, though. Someone who made that mistake said something to me once. They claimed they'd seen me before. Of course, I immediately pressed the issue. Do you mean the mummy, Alice? I said. When? Where? Of course, they were at a loss. In fact, I began to feel a little sorry for them, so I told them something. If you're so convinced, then maybe I am actually Alice. But maybe I've lost my memory and can't remember who I am. And so on and so on. I'm still not sure why Clover would tell you something like that, though. Even if she was just messing with you, it seems a little out of left field. You really think she put that much thought into it? She was probably just screwing with him and it was the first thing that came to mind. Maybe she wanted to see if she could get him to believe something completely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I could see her doing something like that. Well, I think that's enough idle gossip for now. The cold sleep business is interesting, but I don't think it's terribly useful. We should go see if the other team has returned to the warehouse yet. At Alice's request, we made our way out of the treatment center. <laughs> Oh, this wind is going crazy. This wind as I go, it's going crazy. That's what shook the door a second ago. This is. It looks like another warehouse. It looks like the same warehouse. Hey, look. Three more doors. They're all glowing white. You think. These might be the next set of chromatic doors. I'd bet on it. Look, they've got the same boxes next to them as the other doors. So the next set of doors are... They haven't all been the same color before. Well, we definitely need to tell the others about this. Right. Let's head back to the floor, eh? Thank goodness, you finally returned. I was beginning to get anxious. Did something happen? Yes, it's Quark, you see. What? What happened to Quark? He collapsed. It happened so suddenly. We were just searching our room. What? Please, you must hurry to the infirmary. Clover is looking after him, but his condition could change at any moment. You should go. Oh no. Tamiyoji shoved Kay aside and left through the yellow door. The rest of us exchanged a few startled looks and then ran off after him. Hey, what are you doing? He's sick, and we don't even know what's wrong with him. What if you make him worse? Then what am I supposed to do? I have to save him. Save? That seems a little extreme. Maybe he just has anemia or something. No, that's not it. I know him better than any of you. He doesn't have anemia. He's never just collapsed before. Well, then call an ambulance and stop freaking out about it. You son of a bitch. This is serious. The infirmary seems pretty well equipped. There are plenty of diagnostic tools, but without a doctor, there's not going to be much we can do with him. 
Right, Luna? Well, about Luna. Uh, that's right. But remember, D, you have a medical license, don't you? Wait, really? Is that true, Luna? Um, well, yes, but... You have to take a look at him, then. Please. Quark needs your help. Okay. I'll see what I can do. I think that machine over there is a medical scanner. It's called an Atom. It uses nuclear magnetic resonance imaging to examine and diagnose people. So, that thing can tell us what's wrong with Quark. Yes, I believe it can. I don't want to rush you, but the sooner the better. Just let us know if you need anything. Of course. You went there too, didn't you? The only thing in the treatment center are those treatment pods. I have yeah, to- Yeah, that's the part where he tries to kill himself. Oh wait, whoa, 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 wait, what? Uh, uh, what are you doing? I turned to follow Tamiyoshi's gaze. There stood Alice, her hand wrapped tightly around the scalpel. Apparently she had been the one to take, take away from Quark. The longer I looked at her, however, the more I wondered if she'd taken it to protect him or for some other sinister reason. She didn't seem stable. In fact, she seemed to look far more like Quark had a moment ago than I was entirely comfortable with. Her eyes were flat and hollow. Her face was an emotionless mask. She was not well. Alice. Hey, are you feeling okay? We're all going to die. Huh? We're all dead already. Only terrorists would resort to biological warfare. But they will. Soon. Uh, hey, what the hell are you talking about? You don't understand? All of humanity is going to die. The virus will spread. Adults. Children. Everyone. Everyone! There won't be anyone left! I... I'd rather die here! <laughs> Wait, Alan. We were all too stunned to even try to restrain her. She just stood there as she spun around and left through the door. Damn it! I shook myself from her, took off after her. For those few moments of hesitation, I put too much distance between. I put too much distance and too many doors between us. Shit! Which way did she go? Right? Left? I was still trying to decide when everyone else poured out of the infirmary. You lost her? Yeah. I don't know which way she well, went. Well, let's split up and look. Quickly. She... Right. Look. If you find her, it's probably best not to shout or anything. Just do your best not to provoke her. Understood? Ten Miyoji. Gotcha. I think you should stay here with Quark. The rest of us can look for Alice. Sound good? <sighs> yeah. I stay here. Got it. All right, let's move, people. Get going. Five command we scattered, filtering off into different doors. As I ran, I thought, where should I look for Alice? Past the lounge would be a good bet. No one here, huh? Damn, where'd she go? Complaining wasn't gonna help anything. gone a few steps from the walkway before through the grass when I stopped short. Oh, oh there we go. Alice. Oh, there you are. Good. I'm glad you showed up. 
Huh? I just got here a minute ago. She was like this when I found her. When you showed up, I was getting ready to carry her to the infirmary. And she's uh, alive. Yeah. Her breathing and pulse seem normal. She doesn't appear to have any obvious external wounds. Oh, she's just unconscious. Looks like it. What about this gobble? Doesn't look like she has it. Figure she probably dropped it on the way here. Anyway, we need to get her to the infirmary. Give me a hand here. Right. Alice was lighter than I expected. And fine, I managed to set off towards the inform infirmary at a brisk trot. This is interesting. So does she not kill herself? All right, this round? please pay attention, it everyone. Seems like she kills herself by what was happening there when we find her dead in the crew quarters and all the other paths. You need to hear this. The atom has finished scanning Alice. What did it say? Her results are identical to Quark's. She has also been infected with Radical Six. On our way back, Phi had gone off to retrieve the rest of her of the participants. Seven sets eyes widened as Luna spoke. Oh no! No! What's going to happen to her? Well, like I said before, there's only one way to cure Radical Six. There's a special antiviral treatment. Do you know what immunoglobulin is? Immunoglobulin? It's another name for antibodies. Some people have antibodies that can fight off Radical Six. Those antibodies are the basis for Excelivir. <laughs> Wait, what about those pods in the treatment center? Can't we just stick them in those? Right. I thought of that too. So I went and took a closer look at them. Unfortunately... They can't cure it. Correct. They can suppress the symptoms for a while, but they can't kill the virus itself. The only way we can help Alice and Quark is if we can find some Excelivir. But the pods will keep them from getting any worse, right? Yes. <laughs> well then what are we waiting for? One of you, grab Alice. We're going to the treatment center. As he spoke, Tamayoshi moved over to Quark and lifted a small, conscious body off the bed. Quark shifted slightly as Tamayoshi moved him, and something fell out of his pocket with a soft clink. I bent down slowly and picked it up. Is this medicine? What? Well, what is it? Hold on. Uh, there's a name on the label. Excel... Excelivir. Excelivir! You found it, Sigma! That's the one thing that can cure Radical Six! Uh, why did Quark have it? Perhaps he found it earlier. Earlier We explored when? the laboratory. It was on the other side of the red door. I happened to notice Quark putting something in his pocket. He hit it? Whether or not that was his intention is unclear. I did not have the opportunity to ask, as he collapsed immediately afterward. It didn't feel appropriate to go digging around in his pockets for it after that. And to be honest, it had also slipped my mind. We were rather preoccupied with getting him to the infirmary as quickly as possible. Who cares about the details? We have it! Hurry up and give it to him, Luna. Uh, hey, hold on a minute! What about Alice? Does it really matter if she goes first or not? Um, I'm sorry, but I don't think we can do that. What? There's only enough here for one person. The only way we have to administer uh -huh, this is with the injection gun. And the way it functions, it uses a whole bottle each time you pull the trigger. In other words, we can't split the dose in two or something. Right. While we all stood stunned, Phi moved. Stepping over to Quark, she quickly ran her hands through his clothes and stepped back with a frown and a small shake of her head. Nothing. That one bottle was it. You think there might be some way back in this... You think there might be some more back in the laboratory? No. Unfortunately not. No. Oh god. Just enough medicine for one dose. Only one person can be saved. Who should we give it to? Alice or Quark? What the hell is this? There's no way we're gonna... There's no way we're only gonna save and one of them. what are we going to do? Do I have to spell it out? We're going to save them both. How? That's, um... I need them to calm down. Think, there had to be some way to save both of them. It was there, I knew it. IG equals immunoglobin. Do you know what immunoglobulin is? It's another name for antibodies. 
IG replicate. Oh, this is over on the path when we were in the, um, what was it called? Uh, it was on the clover path, the treat, no, not the treatment center, the laboratory with, uh, yeah, Dio, and then the, yeah. When he broke the exolivir on that path. IG replicator? Replicator makes it sound like it makes copies of stuff. So it's like a copy machine. Yeah, probably copies IG, or whatever that is. Any ideas? Who knows, ice cream by the gallon? IG replicator in the laboratory. It's an immunoglobin replication machine. Uh, what? I can copy immunoglobin. Antibodies. One sec, I need to see what the trophy name for that is. If I told you... If I told you you had a nice antibody... Oh, <laughs> uh, we need to go back into that. Okay. I just wanted to see what that trophy name was. It can copy immunoglobin antibodies. <laughs> Luna just said Exolivir is made from antibodies. That means we can make more Exolivir. Hold on a moment. There is a strange device in the laboratory that says IG Replicator on it. Clover and I examined it thoroughly when we were in that room. Yeah. We never could figure out what it did, though. Exactly. My question is, how do you know about it, Sigma? I saw it when I was in the laboratory. When was that? Um... Probably when you were looking for Alice, right? No, Dio was wrong. I hadn't gone to the laboratory when I was looking for Alice. I didn't think I'd ever been in the laboratory. So how did I know about the IG replicator? If what he's saying is true, then we should be able to duplicate the Excelivir. That would mean we could cure Alice and Quark. Hmm. Let's go have a look then. The laboratory, right? Yeah, no time to waste. We all nodded. Wait, we can't leave them all here alone. Luna, do you think you stay behind and look after them? Oh, of course. I'd be happy to. Alright, then let's go. This is the lab, huh? Yes. Where's this IG replicator thing? Right here. So this can copy the Excelivir? I think so. What are we waiting for? Calm down, all right? Don't rush me. I carefully lowered a small vial of Excelivir into the slot on the side of the machine. Empty vial already protruded from the other side. Presumably that's where the duplicated Exolivir would go. Ready? When I push this button, it should- Skip it. Just press the damn thing. Right. And pressed. I think Junpei in the first game did the same thing, but I can't really have what it did for Did it work? Have a look. The empty vial has something in it now. And the vial Sigma used remains as it was. It does not seem to have lost any of its contents. So, it w would have been pretty bad if it hadn't. Alright, let's get this thing back to the infirmary. I reached down and pulled both files from the machine, intending to slip them, them deftly into my pockets. What oh, happened? Shit. Sorry, my hands slipped. You dropped one of them? Yeah, just one what though. What the hell? What if you'd broken it, you idiot? Come on. If it broken, we could have just made another copy. Before Tamioji could reply, Fi spoke. Uh, guys? I was surprised to hear a voice coming from from near my feet. I looked down to see her staring intently beneath the table. You see? It did break! No, the vial's fine. See? She held it up in one hand, but didn't move her eyes. Then what the heck is going on down there? Take a look. Second bomb. She sit down the table. She sit back from the table and quickly, silently. Let us bend down to look. Yep, I figured it would be the bomb number two. Whoa! The bomb. Really? That makes two then. 
Guess Kay was right after all. So there were more bombs. So it would seem. Was this here when you guys came through the first time? No, it was not. Yeah, I didn't see anything, and I looked real hard. Then somebody must have said it while we were looking for Alice. Who the hell would do that? We were all out looking for Alice. It could have been any one of us. No, not any of us. I was back in the infirmary. Quark was still out, so I was keeping an eye on him. So we shouldn't consider you a suspect, is that right? Yeah. Quark's off the list, too. But Ten Miyoji, you have no proof that you spent the entire time in the infirmary, do you? What? You could have quietly made your way to the laboratory, planted the bomb... That's insane! Listen to yourself! There's no way in hell I'd have left Quark all by himself to go plant a goddamn bomb! Tamiyoji was still staring furiously at Kay when Clover spoke up. Hey, what's this thing? I turned, I turned in time to see her grab something from under the table. It looks like a... memory card. Where was it? Um, right under the bomb. It was down on the floor under the table. Could it have been put here by the same person who set the bomb? I just want to check one quick, quickly. Okay, so now we can get past this, so I assume we're going to get to the AB game and see these endings then. Oh, this is a long one. We'll play by here. There was nothing like it here when we examined this room. Do you think they dropped it accidentally? Unless it was left here intentionally, yes. I imagine so. What do you think's on it? Let's take a look. Could I see it for a minute? Yeah, I guess so. I put the card out from our hat and looked around the room. Nothing. Shoot. No dice. We need to plug it into something that can read memory cards, but I don't see anything so here. So what do we do? Come on, if I knew I'd be doing it. Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. Uh, guys, I think maybe we should get back to the top floor. Yeah, you're right. We've got what we came here for. Um, what should we do about the, uh, bomb? Not much we can do except leave it here. Alice said it'd be dangerous to touch them. True, but... Drop it. We can talk about the bombs later. Right now we need to take care of Alice and Quark. Right. So we'll head back to the firm, we can give them the exolivir, and head back to the floor A warehouse. Right! This ought to do it. It might take a little while, but they should recover. Her voice was quiet as she backed away from Alice and Quark. In her hands was the injection gun. She carefully removed the empty vial and placed it gently into the cabinet with the other one. While we were in the laboratory, Luna had moved Quark to a crude cot. They both looked peaceful as they slept. The madness I'd seen in their faces before was completely gone. Are they really going to be alright? Yes. The analysis I did on the files confirmed that the duplicate was real Excelivir. The original was genuine too, of course. Now that they've been treated... It's only a matter of time before the virus is eliminated. I believe so, yes. Oh man, what a relief. I was really worried. Overgrinned. Agreed. I gave her a reassuring pat on the back. Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All right, everybody. We can be relieved later. Right now we need to get to the AB rooms and fast. Damn. Don't even have time to catch our breath. Come on, let's go. So the floor, the Royal Warehouse is waiting. Huh? Where's Hemioji? Oh, uh, he's... Why? Well, when we were all heading out, I noticed he wasn't doing anything. So I asked him if he was coming with us, and this is what I got. <sighs> I'm still worried about Quark and Alice. I think I'll stick around and make sure they're okay. I see. That means that Fi's only opponent will be Dio. A one-on-one, -on -one, huh? Ugh. <sighs> That's cool. Nothing to worry about. I plan to choose Ally. You know why? Because I've only got one BP. Exactly. 
If you chose Ally and I betrayed you, your BP would drop below zero and... Well, we know what happens then. I want to win, but I'm not that desperate. You see what I'm saying, right? Tenmyoji and Dio are a pair. Tenmyoji only had one BP left. Since Dio said he's going to pick Ally, Fi can't really pick anything else. If she does, Tenmyoji will... Um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Kay and I are going to be going one-on-one -on -one too, right? Since Quark's still sleeping. That is correct. How many BP do you guys have? I've got six. As do I. This will be a tough one then. If one of them can get the other to ally, and then betray that person, the betrayer will have nine points. Look, Kay, I know you don't really have any reason to trust me, but... I know. You would like us both to vote ally, yes? I yeah. I agree. If we were to both betray, then we would gain no points. We would lose nothing either, but that's hardly relevant. If both of us cooperate, then we will both gain two points, which is much more beneficial. Right. Okay, good. You're really gonna do it, right? Yes. Promise? Promise. One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. Shit, this is bad. We need to move now. Indeed. Shall we? Dio, K, Fi, and Clover took off immediately, heading into different AP rooms. Counting from the left, Dio went into room 3, K went into room 4, Fi and Clover went into rooms 5 and 6 respectively. That left Luna and myself. What do you think about taking the one on the far left? Sounds good. That's what the old lady was in. Let's see if she says anything. If that's so, though, we headed off into AB. We headed into AB room number one. Ah, oh, no old lady. Hmm, interesting. Or was that already talked? No, because we haven't even met her. 30 seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Um, it's probably a little late to say this, but you know Alice is still in the infirmary, so... You're saying we should pick Ally, right? Since Alice is going to be defaulted at anyway. Yes. I know. It's not really fair to betray someone who isn't voting. Luna's face broke into a warm, happy smile. Not to be sappy, but it was like a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. I grinned it. I ran back at her before I knew what I was doing. For a minute, the nonary game didn't seem so scary. Ten seconds remain until Ambidex game polling close. close. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. There we go. All right, and we're going to leave it there. All right, and we're going to leave it there for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time where we continue on this path and possibly new good ending now that we pass that roadblock on another route. Maybe. Who knows? We'll see you guys next time.